I am beating every N64 game, and I mean all of them. The twist is, the next game I play is randomly selected, so I have no clue what's coming next. This is the journey to beating every N64 game. Game number 124, Gauntlet Legends. Released in 1998, this game was developed and published by Midway. Gauntlet is a series I was familiar with, but I had no idea this game was on the N64 before this challenge. I personally played Gauntlet Dark Legacy, which I believe is just this game, but a bit more polished. It's very interesting with this series being completely dead and Diablo thriving. Had Midway made some better decisions, maybe we'd be seeing new Gauntlet games to this day. Anyway, I figured this was going to be a good chill time playing through this one. Let's get into it. Upon booting up the game, a cutscene plays with the game's story. There was some mage who summoned an evil demon named Scorn. In completely unpredictable fashion, Scorn broke free of his control and escaped, sealing Sumner's tower with him. Scorn is in control of all realms, and it's up to us to stop him. And then the credits played. Nice, that was a quick game. So the game has a story mode, and that's what I'll be doing to beat this game. There are many different classes with different colors for each to give them different looks. There's the wizard, valkyrie, warrior, archer, and a bunch of secret classes. Now you might notice this has four slots for players. Unfortunately, I have no friends, so I'll be playing alone. We get sent to the hub area and get a bit more lore. This wizard named Sumner is there telling us about how Scorn has just ruined everything. Thankfully, he used his last spell to open up the Mountain Kingdom. We need to head into these kingdoms and retrieve his power from the magic obelisks. This area is like a hub world, essentially. Choose which world to enter, then which level to enter within that world. Right now, only the Mountain Kingdom is open and only level 1 in that world. So into level 1, it's an overhead view of your character. The game's a dungeon crawler. Essentially, there are tons and tons of enemies, and your character is completely overpowered compared to them. Most of the time, enemies will come out of these things called spawners. Destroy the spawner and the enemies no longer show up. Throughout each level, you've got to find these obelisks, which give the wizard his power. You can basic attack by either punching or sending magic as the wizard. The red, yellow, and green bar is the turbo meter. When it's full, you can do a powerful turbo attack. The wizard's is pretty sick. I love that animation. Depending on the level of turbo you have, a different attack gets used. The medium turbo is also awesome. There's various items you might find along the way as well, such as these speed boosts that make your character run so dang fast. And then at the top of this mountain was the portal to exit the level. When you leave, it gives a stat screen with all the gold, kills, and experience you earned in that level. I always thought it was so cool seeing it all pile up on screen. In level 2, I had my first encounter with death. No, not like I died, I mean that Grim Reaper guy. He drains your health quite quickly, and you've got to use a magic potion to take him out. If you don't have any potions, well, get wrecked, I guess. A lot of you might remember the voice from, I don't know what you would call him, the narrator maybe? Anyway, he says certain things when you pick up items or maybe run into an objective. I think the one most probably remembers is when you pick up health. It's kind of hard to hear over the music, but I heard that guy say food is good so many times. I think I was hearing it in my sleep. Later, I found a potion that turned me into a giant. I don't really know what this does other than make you bigger. It seems like I was dealing the same amount of damage and taking the same amount. It does look cool though. In some levels, there will be a hidden area containing a rune stone. These are needed to open the final level. Some of them are quite annoyingly hidden, but the one in this level is easy to find. Not really anything challenging here though. Another level down. Level 3 certainly looked more dangerous. We were running through an active volcano with lava waterfalls. I feel like these wooden rope bridges wouldn't be able to withstand the heat, but I'm not an expert. This one ended differently, taking me to a bonus area. There were these purple coins scattered all over the place in a maze. Feels like I'm playing Pac-Man. I wasn't sure what these were for at the time, but it turns out they're how you unlock all the secret characters. Into level 4 now and there were some new types of enemies. Whatever those bouncing things are, as well as scorpions. There's quite a lot of different enemy types throughout the game. All these levels in the first world are pretty chill to be honest. You can get by just by mashing the attack button into the enemies to slowly overpower them. I find it quite enjoyable though. It's not stressful at all and you just destroy everyone. It's a nice relaxing game to play. Level 5 was further into the volcano, somehow turning the ground purple. 
The number of enemies has increased dramatically, but the N64 is handling it like a champ. I don't really even notice any lag. In general, it was more of the same, and I've now beaten all of World 1. That is, other than the boss. The sixth portal takes you to the Dragon's Lair. This thing is so big and terrifying. A problem I had was your health doesn't refill between levels, so I barely had any to fight this thing. Yeah, I had no chance. This brings me to the game's shop. Here, you can spend the gold you've earned to buy items that you can use in levels, or permanent stat upgrades in armor, magic, speed, strength, and health. Unfortunately, as far as I can tell, there's no way to refill your health in a good way. The best way I found was just go to level 1 and play it over and over again. It's definitely a flaw with the game. Apparently, it was wise for me to not fight the dragon yet. I had missed the obelisk in level 3 because of that bonus area, so I went back and got it. With all the obelisks in World 1, the wizard dude opened up the castle gate. It gives a brief bit of lore that this is Valkyrie's castle. At the top of the castle is the Guardian, who holds a shard containing Sumner's power. So instead of killing that dragon, I'll go to World 2. Real quick, I'll talk about the graphics and music of the game. I really think these graphics look awesome. They have a unique look for the N64 with all the colors standing out really well. It's an art style that I just don't see often. The game doesn't lag much either, although I have heard it can get rough in 4-player. The music is nice, just feeling like adventure, medieval sounding songs. Plus, listening to the narrator's voice is always awesome. So yeah, now we're within Valkyrie Castle. It's quite the jump from that volcanic mountain. There's tons of soldiers running around who want to kill us for some reason. Don't know what I ever did to them. One part of the level design I didn't like in this game is some things that aren't even secrets are hidden behind fake walls and such. You'll need to find like a hidden switch to open the way forward and it's frustrating when you can't find it. There's no indication as to where it might be and what might be fake, so you just start shooting everything. What I'm trying to tell you is I got so freaking lost in this level. It took nearly half an hour of running around aimlessly to find the end. Level 2 of this world is the Dungeon of Torment. The pits are filled with poison, but luckily we can't fall off the ledge. There's rats everywhere, as well as these suspicious tentacles coming from the grates along the wall. The amount of enemies is multiplied by like 4 or 5 at this point. Game still runs smoothly. Definitely tougher to take all these guys out in single player though, but magic sure helps. There were only two obelisks in World 2. With those activated, the gateway to the town was opened. We get more lore that this used to be the peaceful town of Twinyan. Nowadays, it's full of zombies due to the toxic gas pumped from the airship held up by hot air balloons above the town. Yeah, that's... weird. Instead of going there, I went back to the castle to the armory, to be more precise. There's a nice cozy fireplace to kill dudes next to, along with a great marble floor plan. This place is well taken care of. There's traps all along the floor and walls. It just chips away at your health slowly if you're running through all willy-nilly. Also, the rats are orange now for some reason. This one wasn't too tough, although not that straightforward. Now I decided to go back to the dragon. Why? Well, I'm not sure. I rate these after the fact, and sometimes it seems like I do things in a weird order. Anyway, there's an item you can get that makes you shoot three attacks at once. It does pretty decent damage. You're supposed to, like, hide behind these rocks to dodge all its attacks and whatever. Instead, I got knocked into the corner by its claw attack, and the AI just broke. I was able to attack as much as I wanted, and it just sat there. Absolutely love finding the cheese like that. Sumner was glad we beat the dragon because we obtained a shard for him. It seems these shards are to repair his stained glass window. Man, couldn't you have caught a repairman for that? Now it's time to head to the castle treasury, where they keep spinning bananas for some reason. The main thing this level offers is there's a room with a frozen axe. You can see it on a pedestal easily, but you sure can't reach it. Gotta find all the random hidden switches to grab that thing. This area is a giant maze with teleporters galore. I did find the switch hidden under a barrel. So what is this axe? Well, it weakens the dragon to make it easier to kill. Guess that would have been useful. Oh yeah, this level also ended in one of those bonus rooms. It's surprisingly easy to get the secret characters in this game. Didn't go for the World 2 boss yet, so instead, time to take on the fields. It's full of grassy goodness, along with tons and tons of zombies and leeches. There's specifically this one zombie that constantly throws bombs at you while running away. I hate that guy. 
And there's plenty of dirt fields too where people were trying to grow crops. Zombies like brains though, so it's not seen much use lately. The golems in this world are so much stronger too. Thankfully they're slower than you, so you can kite them quite easy. This level ended in a bonus area as well, and it's super weird. There's just these different colors everywhere and giant mushrooms. It feels so incredibly out of place. Maybe the devs were just messing around with these, I don't know. So by this point I had purchased quite a few health upgrades from the shop, and I figured I'd go farm my HP to see how much I had total. With over 2400 HP, I decided I'd try my luck with the second boss, the Chimera. It's this massive dude with wings and the heads of a snake, lion, and some bird. Looks like an ostrich. All three of them shoot various beams and energy balls at you, and you've got the stones to hide behind for cover. They do end up getting destroyed though. It seemed like I wasn't strong enough to beat it, but then I used the wizard's tier 2 turbo attack and it just melted the rest of its HP. I'm not sure if it's supposed to be that strong, but hey, I'll take it. Now I had two shards for the window, we're getting there. Next I headed to the cemetery. Such a spooky place, but I'll admit, it does make sense for there to be zombies here of all places. The levels just kept getting bigger and bigger with more and more switches to find. This place had a full on underground crypt with mausoleums inside. I feel like it's a bit hard to convey the journey of this one to you. The core gameplay loop of all the levels is the same, but it's fun to do, trust me. With that one finished, Sumner was able to open up the final world, the Ice World. There's a magical green meteor there, and the dwarves who found it have been transformed into mutants by Scorn. Next up is the Town Spire. It's kind of like a large castle in the town, I guess. There's plenty of zombies and leeches everywhere, as well as these green orc guys. The main thing this level offers is a hidden scroll that weakens the boss in World 4. I found it in one of the towers behind a wall. For whatever reason though, I just couldn't pick it up. It's like the hitbox for it didn't exist. I'm not sure if this was a bug, or maybe I was doing something wrong, I don't know. I beat the first two bosses without weakening them though, so I'm sure I'd be fine. That's the thing with this game. In the end, you can just farm levels in gold to buy stat upgrades. Next level was the airship. The one that dispensed the stuff that turned everyone into zombies. It's a weird looking airship, honestly. Looks like I'm running around a level from Donkey Kong Country 2. It even has those hot air balloons they were talking about. What a wild design choice. It seems impractical from a physics standpoint. There wasn't really any trouble here whatsoever. Another level down. The boss in this world is the Plague Fiend. I don't know what the heck this thing is supposed to be. It's just like a green ooze blob thing. It honestly kind of looks like a giant green turd. I thought I was doing quite well, but then it bent down and bit me, taking most of my health. Time to farm my HP back up. This time I bought a five way shot from the shop. Basically you shoot five attacks every time you shoot. This just melted this guy's HP. While I did take some damage, it was no match for my pay to win mechanics. Easiest kill of my life. I had now obtained three out of four pieces of Sumner's window. Soon this place will really feel like home again. Only one world left to go, the ice world. First level is the docks. Guess there's some ice fishing going on here. Yeah, this level's mostly like just above the surface of the water, but again, you can't fall off the ledge, so it's just an aesthetic choice. Oh, and there's these green glowing walls that looked pretty cool. Then at one point, one of the enemies clipped through a gate. I'm surprised that didn't trigger the Valve anti-cheat, to be honest. I swear, I was in this level for nearly an hour, mostly because I couldn't find the rune stone. Considering how fast my character is from buying all those speed upgrades, that was so long running around. Next was the frozen camp, where there's tons and tons of ice worms running at you. It's wild how their hole in the ground moves with them and they leave no dirt behind. Then there's the crystal mines, where we encounter a bunch of those mutant dwarves. There's also the world's slowest elevator here. Don't want to move or anything, you know, want to get that real elevator experience. With that level down, it was nearing the end of the game now. Only one runestone left to get. The fourth level in this world is the Erupting Fissure. Basically you delve down into the mines where those dwarves found that meteor. There's lava all over the place, which is certainly a change of scenery. It was an easy win, and it was time for the fourth boss. This guy's the Yeti, a true nemesis. This dude just like crawls out of his cave where he's minding his own business, and I decided to beat him up. I think I might be the bad guy here. 
With the five-way shot, I destroyed his health. Honestly, I'm a bit surprised at how little damage his attacks did to me. Now I had the fourth and final shard and Sumner's stained glass window was repaired. Apparently this window warps us to the sacred cathedral where Scorn is hiding. This place has certainly seen better days. It's like someone threw a rager here and trashed it. It's an incredibly short level with a portal to Scorn himself at the end. Scorn is way harder than the other bosses. He attacks constantly and it takes way more hits to kill. A five way shot isn't going to brute force this guy. Really? I don't know how you're supposed to avoid his attacks. It's not like you can block them or anything. This first attempt was a disaster. After farming up to over 6000 HP, I took on Scorn once again. I think it was a bit overkill though, cause I only lost like a thousand. Oh well, as long as I win, right? When we got back, I thought we were done, but nope. Sumner says Scorn has released an army of death onto this tower, so we gotta stop that now too, I guess. This opens a secret fifth world with three levels total, and the final runestone is located here. The first level is the trenches. I found it real weird that the enemy spawners in this level are like circus tents or something. I swear, it looks just like those things in World 2 of Spyro 1. If you were wondering, the level does contain lots and lots of trenches. In fact, they make a huge maze with different switches opening different paths. Oh my god, I hate the switches. This level ended in a bonus area. I thought it was cool how it had a dark effect. It's pretty impressive lighting for the N64, not gonna lie. Level 2 of this world is the Fortified Towers. Not sure it should be called that. More like the Endless Boardwalks. Those circus tents things are back once again as well. There was one sketchy moment when three golems attacked me at once. Night of the Living Trees, basically. I knocked this one out, then it was on to the final level, the Fortress. The 13th and final runestone was hidden behind a random wall, as per usual. And now with all the runestones collected, the portal to Scorn's realm was open. This is the true final level of the game. This place looks like I've gone straight to the underworld. And look at all those enemies! I feel like they just threw every enemy from every stage and crammed them into this one. The spawners here are these weird purple glass things on the ground. I'm not sure if they're portals or glass. This one has by far the most enemies though. Once I'd reached the end, it was time. The final battle with Scorn once and for all. He attacks so fast with his beams and energy balls. Plus there's one where he just picks you up and throws you. Overall though, it's not too different from the first fight with him. I didn't quite have the juice to beat him this time, so I had to go farm for a bit. Okay, 20 minutes and 4000 HP later, and Scorn was defeated for the final time. He has a ridiculous death animation until finally exploding into a bunch of pieces. We get a cutscene with the wizard guy congratulating us. He reveals he captured his brother Garm, he was the one who brought Scorn into the world. He banishes him to the underworld for eternity as punishment. And we get a bit of epilogue that the world is saved but the forces of Scorn are still in the realms. We're awarded with a permanent halo which will make us immune to all grim reapers we find. And like I said earlier, the credits just roll when you turn the game on. But yeah, that's about all there is for this one. Game complete. So yeah, there you have it, my journey to beating Gauntlet Legends. This game's just flat out a good time. Killing thousands upon thousands of bad guys feels so nice. I know it would be way more fun to play with other people, but it's still a good experience by yourself, I think. Some of the ways to solve the levels are annoyingly cryptic, but for the most part, it's not that stressful to deal with. I feel like the bosses could have used some work, they're quite boring to how you'd think they could be. It's probably the low end of the game. But yeah, it's got sick graphics and good music to keep you entertained too. I gave it a 9 out of 10 for enjoyability and a 2.5 out of 10 for difficulty. Hey, thanks for watching the video. Have a sneak peek at the next game. 266 games on the list. It could be anything. Let's find out what we get. 3, 2, 1, go. 222? <laughs> What's that? Uh, all right. We are playing Stunt Racer 64. Whatever the heck that is, it has been decided. 
But yeah, if you made it all the way to the end, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you enjoyed the video, consider giving it a like. It helps the channel a lot. And if you like this series, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on the next one.